Hello and welcome to Lorefan Gaming Plays Neverwinter Nights 2. I'm your host Lorefan in this two-part series of classes for Neverwinter Nights 2. We're going to go ahead and cover the base classes of the game in this video. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Do not forget to hit the notification bell so be updated and more. In this video, it will cover what these base classes are all about. Also, what attributes you should definitely uh, put into what some of the skills that you uh, do cover. And last but not least, a demonstration of said class I'm talking about. Now, uh, please note, if you're multi-classing, there's uh, favorite classes on some of the races. So, definitely be looking on that. And one more thing I'll uh, do is suggest it races. So, this way, you will pick the uh, right race if you're uh, power gaming. Now, if you're uh, casually playing it, like for example, a halfling fighter, that's fine uh, too. So, let's go ahead and talk about level adjustment races next. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some of the races that are level adjustment there in this uh, video. So, uh, real quick, you'll gain some of the uh, strengths of these uh, races and weaknesses too. You also uh, gain some nice stat boosts too on certain stats. Now, uh, bad news is that it'll take longer for said race to level. So, for example, the uh, drow here, our friend, will take about 6,000 experience points in order to get from level 1 to level uh, 2. Now, great news about that is a level one drow equals up to a level three human. So that's my warning. So let's go ahead and talk about the first class, the Barbarian. Let's go ahead and talk about the Barbarian class. So their frontline melee fires that equip uh, martial and simple weapons. They equip light and medium armor and some shields. That's not tower. High hit point dice, D1, D12 to be exact. Also, uh, they could rage too, so when they uh, rage, they gain plus 2 strength and plus 2 constitution with some will saves and minus 2 AC. Now, when that wears off, they get penalized minus 2 strength and constitution. They move slowly. Now, they get fast movement. They move a bit fast. They get some uh, defensive feet like the Uncanny Dodge, for example, and damage reduction. Now, best race is uh, Human Half Orc, those Plain Touch Elementals. And uh, finally, uh, anyone with the high strength and constitution bonuses too. You gotta be lawful in order to be a barbarian. As for gods, you can become any god what you want. You'll uh, do uh, well. As for stats, I'll probably say a strength, constitution in that order, and then dex to 13 if you want some of those feats. And finally, uh, intelligence to 14. Let's get to the skills, everyone. Now, here's the following skills that the barbarian gets. They get craft armor, craft traps, craft weapons... Intimidate, Listen, Survival, Taunt, and Parry. So those are uh, good. So if you want to do the original campaign or something like that, yeah, the crafting weapons and armor is very nice. Other than that, focus on the other skills too. As for feats, focus on one melee weapon. Go all the way on that. And if you like Cleave, then go for Power Attack, Cleave, and Great Cleave. Those are good selections too. If you want some uh, good defensive ones, or more hit points, toughness is uh, very nice. Dodge is uh, good too. So there's uh, other feats out there you can explore too in the game. So let's go to the next part of the video, which is the combat portion to demonstrate how good the Barbarian is. Now for the next portion of the video, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the Barbarian in combat. So I decided to rage up. So because I uh, definitely raged up, our Barbarian is going to definitely do some damage. And because I have some good constitution, also the rage will uh, last longer. And I'm doing more damage also because of high strength too. So yeah, your Barbarian is a frontline melee fighter. Might not wear a uh, heavy plate, but still he makes up for in a lot of the other departments too. So next up will be the Bard. Next up is the Bard. So the Bard, you gotta be non-lawful. That's very important. Their hit dice is 1d6. Now, uh, their uh, weapons are, for example, are simple, which does include uh, in this category for bars is longsword, rapiers, short swords, and short bows. As for armor, it's uh, light and shields. Now, their uh, spells, aka okay, their uh, songs, are based on charisma. That means you have 16 charisma. That means you do level 6 bard songs. Now, since they are arcane casters with their bard songs, so you gotta have light armor, since this is a special deal for the bard. If you do not, and you try to cast a uh, bard uh, spell, yeah, you're going to fail in heavy plate. So watch out for uh, that in case you get those feats. They get bardic knowledge. That means they know the items to identify. Inspiration, they can only have one inspiration type. However, they boost your party members up. Their uh, bard songs are uh, depending on how many times they can use per day per uh, level. Other than that, my suggestion for uh, stats is uh, charisma. Then afterwards is... Uh, Get that intelligence to 14 if you want to get some good skills. Dexterity 13 is nice. 
and then uh strength and constitution the 12 is good unless you have some points left over then boost those up and as for our races humans acid mirrors those are those angel touch humans and anyone with high charisma in it so that'll help you a great deal uh, i said before alignment is not lawful any gods will uh, do we'll go ahead and skip to the skill part now here's the following skills that is not cross class appraisal bluff concentration craft alchemy craft armor craft traps craft weapons diplomacy let's see what else hide listen lore move silently parry perform very important to get performed slay a hand so that's stealing spellcraft taunt let's see here tumble and use magic guide uh, devices so i'll probably say it's perform is the most important because uh with that there's some bard songs that you benefit from high perform skill as for feeds uh if you want to go focus on some weapon ones that is fine too some uh arcane uh, casting feats is nice too like the uh, meta ones and spell penetration you want to go that far some good defensive ones does include toughness uh dodge those are very nice too now i'm gonna go ahead and skip to the bard songs now as for bard songs you do not scribe them like wizards no you uh, pick them like sorcerers when you level up so you gotta pick wisely so once you pick it and there winter nights too you're uh, stuck with it however you get to cast a set amount of them per day depending on what your spell levels are so let's get to the combat portion now bards are like uh, rogues so you don't want to really put them in the front line instead let someone else tank while you cast your bard spells or you go ahead and sing your uh, songs too there are also some um, very nice defensive ones too so definitely as a bard def don't stick your neck out use your inspiration with your party members you have uh, good bard songs like for example that could do uh, damage to foes do that too and if you have some good bard spells go ahead and abuse those uh, that's about it let's get to the next class now next up is the cleric so they're divine spell casters they have 1d8 hit point dice they could use simple weapons mainly blunt weapons or armor is light medium and heavy armor also shields of Seth for tower shields their spells are uh, divine that means no being penalized when you're casting in the heaviest of armor or the heaviest armor with a shield and they do spontaneous casting which is uh, really nice they do get domain spells they get to pick two of them exactly and they get some bonus spells that they uh, could have gotten uh, later on or from some other uh, classes uh, too they do uh, turn undead, so when that happens, any undead gets hit with it, they flee away or they get destroyed. As for uh, races, uh, they follow, and they are human, drow, great orc, asamirs, those are those uh, divine touch humans, deep gnomes, or any other race with high wisdom. Now, their uh, spell learning is based on how high is your wisdom. So, for example, if your wisdom is 18, you can learn level 8 spells. And their uh, attributes you should focus on is wisdom. And if you want to get more uh, powerful and uh, we call it turn undead. And then, yeah, then uh, go for a little bit of charisma. Other than that, then uh, i probably say it's 12 to 14 intelligence. At least uh, 12 in strength, dexterity, and constitution if you want to go that route. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip to the skills. Now here is the skills that is not cost class. Concentration, definitely want that for a cleric. Craft alchemy, craft armor. Um, let's see craft weapons diplomacy heal that's very nice lore that's uh, good too if you want to know item spell craft very important to get and that's about it as for feats focus on some uh, spell casting ones that really helps out if and only if you want to go offensive then uh, go ahead and do some weapon feats too toughness is a good feat to uh, get if there's any defense ones maybe but other than that if you see any uh for example uh, turn undead ones go for those definitely so let's go ahead and talk about domains now as for uh domain and spells go ahead and pick ones that you feel good some will uh give you uh spells from the other uh classes others will uh put some of the uh spells in the earlier set levels so as for uh spells too i said they're a uh, wisdom base and also uh when you get to those uh spell levels that you automatically learn them all which is a great thing everyone so you don't have to pick and choose and worry about that. So next part of the video will be combat with a cleric against the undead. Now clerics, they can buff up their uh, party members, which is really nice too. They can also heal. Now as for combat, they excel against the undead. They can also use spells against the uh, living too, which is uh, really nice. So my advice with a cleric is have a meat shield go up front, tank for you, or be a distraction while you sit back and just cast some nice spells too. And yeah, clerics do get some nice epic spells, like for example, this uh, evil outsider helped me out, even though I'm a good guy, which is really nice too. 
And turn on dead is a very useful tool against the uh, dead. So definitely remember that. So let's get to the next class. Now, next up is the Druid class. So the Druid class are Divine Spellcasters. Now, they can use simple weapons. However, they are very limited to uh, some of the weapons. As for hit dice, it's 1d8. Armor, they can use leather and medium and shields except for tower shields. Now, since they are Divine uh, Spellcasters, you don't have to worry about spell arcane spell uh, failure, which is uh, very uh, good. Now... Uh, their uh, spells are based on wisdom, so more wisdom you have, more spell levels you open up to. And uh, you gotta be neutral, everyone. That's very important. You cannot be any other alignment. So you gotta be neutral good, true neutral. You all get the uh, picture, too. They also have abilities like Wild Shape. They also get Animal Companions and some uh, Wood-like uh, abilities, uh, too. And uh, as for uh, races, uh, Wood Elf, Drought, Deep Gnomes, Human, Asimir, or any other race with high wisdom is uh, great. Character creation, wisdom is your main stat. That is extremely important. After that, you can focus on 12 to 14 in strength, dexterity, con, and intelligence, depending on uh, what path you're going through. As for spells, very uh, great news is that uh, spells you gain as you level up. That's a good thing. So let's go ahead and uh, get to the skill part of the video. Now here are the skills that you could learn. Concentration, Craft Alchemy, Diplomacy, Heal, and let's see what else. Spellcraft, very important. Lore, Survival, that's a very nice one too. And as far as the uh, feats uh, you should uh, get. Now, feats focus on any of those spell casting ones. Those are really nice. If there's anyone that benefits your uh, shape shifting, go for uh, those too. If you want melee weapons, if and only if that's so uh, well. If you want to get a little defensive, well, I'm going to probably say it's toughness for more hit points. One thing I forgot about druid spells is uh, this, that uh, you learn them all when you level up. So you don't have to pick certain ones you're forcing in that situation. So that's about it for uh, this section. As for animal companions, pick what your personal preference is. So let's get to the combat portion of the video. Now, besides the healing and buffing of uh, party members too, well, the druids can cast spells that uh, rain on their uh, foes or make it a very bad day on a group of foes. They can also use uh, wild shapes in combat. And you can't really cast spells in those unless you have certain feats or certain wild shapes. And if you have those combinations, you could cast spells and still be in your wild shapes. So... I'll probably say is have a meat shield and then you uh, stand back, cast your spells wherever situation you're in. And that's it for the druid. Let's get to the next class. Next up is the favored souls. So they are uh, divine spell casters with 1d8 hit point dice. They have simple weapons they can use and DVD uh, favored weapons. So DD choice in this one is very important. So that's important. And also, uh, let's see here, the armor is light medium and shields except for tower shields now their spells uh, they do not learn like every uh, other level like clerics do instead you pick and choose so choose wisely and they're charisma based so for instance if you have uh 20 charisma then you can learn all the uh divine casting spells and the divine casting spells are from the cleric pool as for uh dd favorite weapons well you get dd favorite weapon feats you get dd uh, weapon focus and uh, dd weapon specialization Later on, you get energy resistance and damage reduction. Any alignment will do. Now, important, whatever uh, god or goddess you pick, for example, uh, you want to use a great sword, then you go for to uh, Torm. And as for uh, races, humans, Asimirs, or any uh, race with a high uh, charisma and strength uh, combination. Now, as for uh, stats, focus on uh, charisma to uh, max that out to 20, then uh, strength, of course. Then get that dexterity constitution to 12. Intelligence to uh, 12 to uh, 14 is good too. And next part is the skills. Let's do it. Now, as for uh, skills, concentration, craft alchemy, craft armor, craft weapons, diplomacy, heal, lore, parry, spellcraft, very important for uh, this class too. And that's about it. As for uh, feats, uh, well, only uh, weapon feats you have to worry about is improved critical. Go for uh, those uh, types too. If you want to go for the spell casting ones, those are uh, great too. And as for power attack, cleave and great cleave, that's a uh, great triple combination. 
And um, one more thing, defensive feats like, for example, toughness, that is good too. And now, as I said before, spells are limited. So choose wisely. I am dead serious, everyone. If you, uh, for example, uh, want cure light wounds and later on you want to get out of that, no, you cannot. So definitely pick wisely on spells. So next part of the video will be combat demonstration. Now, as far as uh, combat, you could buff, heal your companions. Use spells against foes or melee too. So, the favorite soul is versatile. So, if you uh, feel like uh, you want to focus more on the spell casting aspect, replace a cleric or a druid. Or if you want to focus more on the melee aspect, replace a fighter. Either way, for the favorite soul is very good. So, let's get to the next part of the video. Now, next up on the list is the fire class. So, they have one t 10 d hit dice. They can use simple martial weapons. They can use all armor, all shields, including tower shields. They get bonus feats. So, at certain levels, sometimes you get two feats, which is really good. Other than that, they're your tanks. They're your two-handed weapon fighters. They're even your uh, dual-wielding fighters if you are going that route. As for uh, class uh, races, I should say... Now, races, I'll uh, say, is any dwarves are great, humans, half-orcs, any of the Gensai ones, or any other race with high strength, or even uh, Constitution uh, 2 for uh, more survival. Now, as for uh, stat focus, I'm going to probably say is strength is your number one priority. Number two is Constitution when you create your character. I say get dex definitely to 13. There are some great uh, feats that leads up to other prestige classes, too, if you're going that route. Intelligence to 14 for skills. Wisdom and Charisma are your uh, dump stats. So let's get to the skills, shall we? Now, as for uh, skills that you could learn for one point is Craft Armor, Craft Weapons, Intimidate. Let's see here, Taunt and uh, Parry. Also, good cross-class skills is Spellcraft and Tumble. As for feats, I'm going to go ahead and give everybody some nice advice about those. Focus on your weapon feat. One weapon go down the tree. Power Attack, Cleave, and Great Cleave is a wonderful combination. Uh, toughness is uh, uh, perfect too. If you're going to go for knockdown, go for uh, both of those types too. Dodge mobility, those are uh, great. And if you uh, want to, uh, combat expertise is another good one too. Other than that, you're a frontline fighter. So get used to it because you're wearing the heaviest of the armor. And if you're using a shield, you're using the best shields in the game. So let's go to the combat portion of the video. Now for the next portion of the video, you're a fighter. So you're basically a frontline fighter. So... Get used to uh, taking damage, especially if you're using one-handed weapon and a shield. So focus definitely on those uh, feats that are great in the uh, melee department. Other than that, get used to taking while your uh, buddies are casting spells. Or if you have a rogue, yeah, doing that sneak attack. So let's get to the next class. Now, next up on the list is the monk class. So the monk class are like your frontline fighters. However... They can only use cloth. That's right. No armor. If they use any armor, they get penalized. So that is uh, bad. They lose that uh, special bonus in AC and other uh, factors too. Their uh, weapon proficiencies are monks. So uh, they are not only unarmed. They use commas and other uh, weapons too. Now, uh, wisdom. Uh, that does factor in their armor class. So more wisdom you have, more armor class you do uh, get too. Uh, they also have unarmed feats too. That is really nice. There's also uh, defensive feats that helps them out well. And there's also uh, other uh, factors too that monks have. And I'm going to repeat this. Lawful alignment. That's right. You got to be lawful everyone. You're stuck with the three. As you see on the screen. As for uh, races. I'm going to say it's human. Any of the uh, half elves including half drow. Great orc or any uh, other race with a. Uh, Great Wisdom, High Strength if you're going for that Unarmed Damage, or Dexterity for the Dexterity uh, Weapons. As for uh, stats, I'm going to probably say at least Lee, Strength 14, Wisdom 14, or if you're going for the uh, Dex Weapons, Dex 14. Uh, I did was Constitution 14. I put everything else to 14. Intelligence, I left at uh, 10. And same thing with uh, Charisma. So pick whatever uh, build up you're doing or do like I'm doing. And that's about it. Let's get to Skills. Now, let's uh, go ahead and talk about these skills. Concentration, craft alchemy, craft traps. Let's see here. Diplomacy, heal, hide, listen, lower, move silently, parry, spot, and tumble. Yeah, 
Go for tumble definitely since you're in cloth armor. Yeah, that's right. All you're going to be it is in uh, cloth armor. As for feats, uh, definitely focus on any of the uh, melee feats. Or if you're unarmed, definitely focus on that. If you see any other defensive feats, like for example, dodge mobility, go for those. Toughness, big time, go for those too. And if you have uh, extra uh, feats to uh, go for, I'm going to say this. Power, uh, power attack, cleave, and great cleave. So let's get to the combat portion of the video. Now, as for uh, combat, your frontline fighters. So definitely look for any uh, items that has wisdom. If you find one item with eight wisdom, then uh, focus on the other items too. Definitely use your uh, abilities and uh, kick some serious uh, butt. Now, uh, I probably say is if you have a fighter. As your frontline fire, well, go in as an off tank or something like that. If you're the main tank, well, you have to uh, take some uh, damage too, as long as you have the uh, characters healing you up too. Other than that, monks are very nice uh, class to uh, play. If you know what you're doing, you could do some really serious damage. Also, save some money from uh, buying that heavy armor stuff. Let's get to the next uh, class. Now, next up is the Paladin class. They're uh, frontline fighters that could. Uh, Wear all types of armor except for uh, tower shields. They can't use that unless you get the feet for it. They can use simple and martial weapons. 1d10 hit dice. They are restricted to lawful good, so be warned. Uh, however, uh, their spell casting is uh, wisdom based, so they get level 4 spells. They get their own set of paladin spells, so yeah, definitely uh, put wisdom at 14 if you're going for that. They get lay on hands that can, you can use that to heal others. Or if it's undead, you damage them. They get some nice abilities too. They also get smite evil. So they put their charisma modifier into it. And you get to really do some damage with smite evil. As for races, humans are good. Azimirs are the best paladins out there. And any other race with a good uh, strength and charisma combination. And do pick a good god, please. Now, as for uh, your uh, stats, it depends. So if you're going for more of a smite build, 16 uh, charisma. If you're going for more of a DPS build, melee, go for uh, 16 strength. 14 on the uh, wisdom, intelligence uh, 12 to 14, dexterity constitution 12 to uh, 14, depending on what path you're going for. Let's get to the skills, everyone. Now, here are the uh, skills you can learn. Concentration, craft armor, craft weapons, diplomacy, heal, Lore and Perry. As for uh, feats, definitely uh, focus on Divine Might and the Divine uh, Defense one. Get the uh, Weapon Focus ones. Also Cleave, Power Attack, and of course Great Cleave is a great combination. As for stats, if you're doing a Smite build, Charisma all the way. If not, Strength all the way. So let's do the next portion of the video, which is uh, also Combat. And yeah, don't forget the Toughness feat too. Now we're at the combat portion of the video. You could use your own paladin spells to buff up before battle. You're a frontline fighter, so you gotta protect others. So if you see any evil foes, definitely abuse my evil. Undead, yeah, turn undead is a uh, great. However, you it's a few lower levels than clerics. If you have any of the uh, weapon feats, you're golden. If you have the power attack, cleave, and great cleave combo, you're golden too. And also, if you find the Holy Avenger, that is uh, very nice. Lay on Hands is a great weapon. I do mean great weapon against the undead. Other than that, if you uh, have high charisma, smite away. Otherwise, melee away. So let's get to the next class, the Ranger. Now, next up on the list is the Ranger class. So Ranger class is basically like a druid plus a fighter. Except for uh, rangers can equip, uh, let's see, the following is light armor and also uh, shields too. They have 1d6 hit dice, however they can use uh, simple and martial weapons which is really great. Uh, they track, track is very important especially in the uh, storms expansion. They have favorite enemies, so in other words, uh, uh, whatever favorite enemies you pick you get bonus attacks against them. They get toughness at level 3, so that's a good uh, defensive feat to get for more hit points. And uh, let's see what else. They have ammo companions, just like a druid. They have their own set of ranger spells. However, the maximum amount of those is level 4, so you need 14 wisdom for that. Keep that in mind. 
It's also divine too, so you don't have to worry about that. And they have combat styles. There is two to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and explain about that in a bit. Now, as for races, the following races you should definitely do is any elves. That's great. Humans or anyone with your high dexterity or strength, depending on what fighting style you definitely go for. As for your stats, if you're going for high strength, that means you fo should focus on the two weapon fighting uh, setup. Now, high dexterity, well, yeah, that's for archery uh, set range. It depends on what you're going. So, for example, if you're uh, going for archery, put your strength at 12 to 14. Intelligence to 14 at least, that helps you out. Constitution 12 to 14. Wisdom 14, spell casting, and charisma is a dump stat. Now, here's the following skills. Concentration, craft alchemy, craft armor, craft traps, craft weapons, heal, hide, lore, move silently, parry, search, set trap, lore, survival. Survival is very important now if you want to be a little bit more sneaky since you get high, um, we call it high in uh, plain sight later on. Outdoors only, then uh, put some points in the hide and move silently too, even though that has a timer. As for feats... Well, it depends. So if you're focusing on the archery one, yeah, go for anything like long bow, short bow, any of the uh, bows, and then focus on the improved criticals on that. And as for weapons, focus on the weapon feet. Now, a great combination if you're going dual wielding is uh, power attack, cleave, and of course, great cleave too. Always pick up a bunch of your favorite enemies too. Focus on one improving favorite enemy too. That helps you out greatly. Other than that, just uh, keep you cool and that's it. Now, on to the combat path. So, here we go. Now, so, when you get to level 2, you have two choices. Two weapon fighting or archery. So, if you want to be a ranger archer, go for the archery one. Otherwise, two weapon fighting. So, let's get to the combat portion of the video. Two weapon fighting style. Now, you can buff up before combat since this is the uh, ranger two weapon style combat. I'll uh, definitely use the uh, power attack, cleave, and great cleave. So if you like the archery set, yeah, I would not advise uh, power attack, cleave, and great cleave. Instead, use those archery skills. And now because uh, the ranger has improved from Neverwinter Nights 1, yeah, those uh, dual wielding uh, feats kick in. Even if I am at high strength and uh, dexterity, that does not fit the bill on the feats too, so... We'll kick some serious butt since I did also uh, pick uh, favorite enemies undead. I get to do some extra damage too. And some uh, feats later on will uh, definitely boost those uh, favorite enemy uh, feat damage also. Other than that, depending on what path you pick, the ranger is very versatile and very powerful. It's even used in some uh, rogue builds too because of the two weapon fighting and the arcane archer because the uh, archery uh, path too. So let's get to the next class. Now, next up is the rogue class. So, rogues are very sneaky. They could disable traps. They could steal from people. They could hide and move silently. They could also be uh, using some uh, nice talking skills too. And they could attack foes when they're uh, when you know, they're not at their advantage or a disadvantage, I should say. They have one d6 hit dice. Their proficiency at weapons are rogue, which are really simple weapons. But it does include uh, rapiers, short bows, and short swords. They can only use light armor. No shields at all. Yeah, they can't use shields. They also excel in class skills that are not cross-class. They're sneak attack. So if any opponent is flat-footed, yeah, you get to do, uh, devastate them. They also uh, could find traps. They also have some nice defensive skills. And uh, later on, they have some nice improvements too. And special abilities you could pick from from the feet tree. Now, here are the uh, races that you should definitely be as a rogue, as my suggestion. Halflings, elves, humans, tieflings, or any other uh, race with great dexterity. Now, as for stats, I'm going to say it right now. Dexterity, number one, that's important. That's right, max that out. Unless you're going for a strength build, then put dexterity at 14. Strength should be number two. Put your intelligence to 14 for more skills. Uh, Constitution 12 to 14. I'm going to say it right now. Wisdom and Charisma are kind of like your dump stats for a rogue. So let's get to the skill part of the video. Now, as for the skills, that's not cross class. Appraisal, bluff, craft alchemy, craft traps, craft weapons, diplomacy, disable devices, very important for rogues. Hide, very important for rogues. 
intimidate move silently extremely important for rogues too since that goes great with hot open locks really important for rogues parry search if you want to look for traps important set traps slay a hand so if you want to go stealing that's important too. spot taunt tumble very important since you're in uh, light armor use magical devices in case you want to use something else besides rogue weapons so my advice for a rogue is is focus on weapon focused feats if you're in the feat department and uh, also uh, any of the uh, good ones too like opportunist that's uh, great too any of the defensive feats including toughness and the dodge mobility those are great too spring attacks are very nice other than that that's it for the feat department so we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the combat demonstration for this video now as for uh, combat yeah you definitely want to start in stealth and yeah you also want to take advantage of uh, flanking your foes too so make sure you have a tank uh, tanking your foes and then you go in flanking now if there's any spell casters there's attack opportunities you take advantage of uh, too you can also use some of the epic feet like for example expose weakness is very nice now if you uh, couple this with a shadow dancer you could restealth again and five seconds later you could try that again so that's a nice uh, combination there too other than that you're very sneaky as a rogue make sure someone tanks for you then you just back uh, i should say uh, sneak attack instead backstab and have fun with that other than that disable traps and also uh if you like uh, setting traps you could do that too for a rogue so let's get to the next class now next up is the sorcerer class they're arcane spellcasters they can cast magic from a far distance and safely hopefully they have a uh, 1d4 hit dice they can only use simple weapons as for armor none at all unless you get those armor feats wear any armor you will suffer arcane failures so have the armor also add the shield more likely you're going to fail in spell casting unless you have the still spell feat now a uh, difference between a sorcerer and a uh, wizard is simple wizards they uh can scribe uh, spells from a scroll learn from a spell book they have to prepare their spells however they could cast it sorcerers for this class well uh guess what that guy do is pick and choose the spells they can cast it freely however their selection are limited so you gotta be wise on that or you uh will suffer their uh spells are charisma based so in other words if you have for example uh 19 charisma you can cast up to the ninth level spell that's different than the uh, wizard's uh intelligence base now as for races here's the following for my suggestion Humans, Asimirs, or any other race with high charisma. As for stats, charisma, important. Max that out, ASAP. Intelligence, get that to 14 for skills if you want to. Constitution should be definitely second for more hit points. And the other stats, you could do whatever you uh, want. So let's get to the skill part. Now, for the following skills, to get bluff, concentration, very important for sorcerers, craft alchemy, lore, spellcraft very important too and if you want to get tumble that's very nice too to add some ac for a cross class skill as for feats focus i do mean focus on uh spell casting feats don't try getting uh melee weapon ones you're not really want to melee any defensive ones i'm going to say is probably toughness that's a very uh good one and let's go ahead and talk about the spell selection now remember your spells are very limited so once you pick it that's it it's stuck with you so choose wisely if you want to go ahead uh, when you get to level two make a save and then uh, of course uh load your save if you don't like that spell now uh, good star ones i'll probably say is magic missile and then of course mage armor those are our two uh, good ones to start out with as for familiars go ahead and pick which one you like the most so next portion of the video will be combat now next up is the combat portion since you're a sorcerer you're a bit squishy so uh definitely be careful buff up before combat and uh make sure you use your uh fighters or your frontline uh warriors as a tank so you have that paladin protect you other than that go ahead and cast some spells you really like to use against foes right now i'm just doing the uh, buff phase of this uh video so let's uh go ahead and uh start the uh, combat sequence 
and unfortunately this is not Neverwinter Night 1 so there is zero time stop so that's a warning from me so if you're looking for that not today so let's go ahead and mess some orcs up I like to do is sometimes cast a AOE spell if I see any direct damage against a single foe that's a uh, great too uh, if you have any of those anti uh, protection spells there's spell breach yeah go ahead and use them on uh, spell casters other than that make sure you have a tank with you they go in first you blast in second destroy everything in sight we'll go to the next class now next up is the spirit shaman they have 1d8 hit point dice. They are divine casters, so don't worry about that arcane spell failure. They can use gloves, daggers, darts, hand axes, spears, quarter staffs, sling, short bow, and of course throwing uh, axes and also uh, light crossbows too. They can use light armor and of course shields. Uh, they get to uh, pick a certain set of spells just like sorcerers. They're wisdom based. However, the difficulty uh, checks on their spells are... Uh, charisma so yeah definitely want to get that high uh, wisdom up first so for example if you are at 19 wisdom you can cast all these spirit shaman spells uh, you have also uh, they also have spirits that helps out your allies and themselves also uh, damage their foes too other than that my advice is is for races is uh humans asimirs or any of the uh wisdom plus charisma uh set up for the other races as for stats wisdom max that out then get charisma up there when you start out, then uh, Constitution 3rd. Everything else is uh, 10 to uh, 12, depending on how you feel. Let's get to the next part of the video, the skills. Now, as for the Spirit Shaman skills, they get Concentration, Craft, Alchemy, Diplomacy, Heal, Listen, Lore, Spellcraft, Spot, and Survival. Those are the skills they should get. You have enough points, go ahead and cross-class in the Tumble. Spell, spellcraft is important for uh, them too. As for feats, definitely focus on uh, the spellcasting ones. That's very important on that. If you want to get toughness, go ahead and do that. If and only if you really want to really do the weapon uh, feats. Other than that, that is uh, it for this part. Let's go ahead and talk about the limitation of their uh, spells and uh, the positives too. Now, the positives of the Spirit Shaman spell selection is it's from the Druid Tree. And you cast more than a druid. Bad news is once you uh, pick, you cannot uh, unpick it. Unlike Neverwinter Nights 1 where you could uh, go in the sorcerer level and uh, remove a spell. Then put another spell in. This game, nope, you cannot do it. So you're stuck with it. So choose wisely. So let's get to the next portion of the video, which is combat. Now, as for spirit shamans, you can buff yourself up. Buff your, up your party members. You can heal. Make sure you, when you're in the healing department, have a uh, tank protect you at all times. Otherwise, yeah, you might get that interruption, maybe. Other than that, spirit shamans have some nice uh, spirits to protect them. Hinder enemies, too. And they have some nice damaging spells. So as soon as I'm done buffing up, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. And just remember, uh, your uh, spell, uh, spell selection is very limited. So that's another warning once again on that. So let's go ahead and uh, pick a selection of foes. Yeah, let's go ahead and mess with the lizard folks. So we got our pet out there doing some nice distractions. And we're going to go ahead and cast this nice spell here. Yep, Storm Vengeance. A lot of them are uh, dying. And like I said before, yeah, make sure you have a tank protect you at all costs. Go ahead and heal up if you need to or go uh, nuclear on foes. So let's get to the next class, shall we? Next up is the Swashbuckler class. They're like light armor melee fighters. Yep, that's what they are. They have one T10 hit point dice. They can use uh, simple and martial weapons. They can only use light armor. However, they get weapon finesse. So definitely look for rapier or short sword, for example. That's nice dexterity uh, weapons. They get insightful uh, strikes. So they uh, apply their intelligence modifier to uh, light weapons they also get some nice uh, defensive feats some good offensive feats uh, too and um, if you have a uh, strength and, or, or I should say, not strength I mean dexterity and intelligence you're building a good swashbuckler so as for races I'm gonna go ahead and list them right now that falls tieflings drought humans halflings or any race with a great in it and dex combination no negatives from the two please 
As for stats, focus on dexterity. That's important. Higher the dexterity, the better you are because you have weapon finesse. Then focus on intelligence. So I'll probably say 14 and 16 in that department. After that, then uh, go for uh, strength and constitution. Wisdom and charisma are your uh, dump stats. So let's uh, go ahead and, of course, get to the uh, skill portion of the video. Now, as for uh, skills for a swashbuckler, bluff, craft armor, craft weapons, diplomacy. Yeah, so if you go into main campaign, craft weapons and armor is good. Lore, parry, taunt, and tumble. Yeah, tumbles are going to be really useful for a swashbuckler. Definitely priority number one on the skill. As for uh, feats, focus on the weapon feats first. After that, get toughness and then uh, any of the uh, defensive feats you uh, want to get. As a nice bonus, definitely get a uh, power attack if you uh, can. Cleave and a uh, great cleave too. Next uh, part of the video will be combat. Now for the uh, combat portion of the video, you're basically a frontline fighter. So uh, definitely uh, make sure you're attacking the foes. If you have a... Uh, cleave to great cleave you're uh, golden definitely use the swashbuckler skills if you uh, can the dex and init combination for your stats are really nice especially items too other than that go for uh, attacking the foes big time while your casters are hammering away so let's get to the next class of the video the warlock now for the next class is the warlock it's a very unique arcane caster so uh their uh, hit points is uh, 1d6. However, they can only use simple weapons. And then their armor is light armor. So in order to cast their invocations, you got to make sure you use light armor. Now, uh, their invocations are very powerful and it's charisma based. Great news about that. I do mean great news is you could pick and choose every time you level up. So if you don't like a certain uh, effect, go ahead and uh, do so. And other than that, they're a very nice uh, arcane-like uh, class. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, give my suggestions about the Warlock uh, uh, stuff you could pick. Yanti, uh, Pure Blood, Human, Asimir, or any race with high charisma. And one more thing, you got to be chaotic or evil. They also have uh, damage reduction and some other nice resistance uh, too. And as for their... Uh, stats you want to go ahead and build up when you start out charisma is your top priority after that if you want some more skill points 12 to 14 intelligence then uh you go ahead and do a uh, constitution third and then uh strength fourth and then uh i'm going to say this right now wisdom uh, it's a dumb stat everyone i hate to say it for this uh class so let's uh go ahead and uh get the skill portion of the video now, as for uh, skills, it's bluff, concentration, definitely get points into that. Craft alchemy, craft armor, craft weapons, heal, intimidate, and let me see what else is on that list. Lore, spellcraft, very important to get, and use magical device, and taunt too is alright, but if you have any cross-class skills, get tumble, definitely helps you out on that AC for every 5 points you uh, put into. As for feats, spell penetration ones are very nice. Combat casting is good too. If you have to get the weapon feats, go ahead and do so. Toughness is a great feat too. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the invocations and the other stuff you get to select. Now for the uh, stuff you want to select, you get to select uh, one per level. If you don't like the one you select, you could deselect it for the next level. If I remember right, there's total three until it gets to a certain point per uh, spell level. Other than that, just uh, experiment. That's all I have to uh, say. There's even a good uh, one that could uh, later on uh, make you turn into a nice creature. So let's get to the combat portion of the video. Now, I'm going to say this right now. If you don't like the Sorcerer or Wizard, well, here's your uh, magic user, the Warlock. Make sure you have a tank uh, tanking the foes. Even though you can handle that with your Etrix Blast, you have high charisma. You get to do a lot of damage. And there's even some uh, good uh, stuff in here. I'm about to show you a few moments, including this right here. You pick the right uh, st uh, what we call stuff for Warlocks when you level up. 
you get this. You do more damage. You get to devastate foes. You have a good time doing it. Just uh, remember if you're in a party system like the original campaign or the uh, Storms uh, expansion. Well, uh, guess what? Have them tank and you just blast away. So let's get to the final class of the video, the Wizard. Next up is the Wizard class. They're Arcane Spellcasters. They have 1d4 hit dice. Uh, their weapon proficiencies are really limited. Uh, they can only wear cloth unless you put feats into that. And they have uh, their spells are arcane. So if you wear anything heavier than cloth, you will start to endure a percentage of spell casting failures. So you wear something like a full plate. Yeah, most likely you're going to fail in casting that spell. They have familiars too. They get their spells from scribing from scrolls. So you get to... Uh, Pick and choose which spells you want to sell for a certain situation. Unlike the sorcerer, once you pick it, you're stuck with it. Their uh, spells uh, levels are intelligence based. So in other words, if you have 19 intelligence, you could cast a ninth level of a wizard spell, which is uh, very good. Now, as for uh, races, humans, any elves, or any race with positive intelligence in it. Now, I'm going to say this right now for uh, stats. Intelligence. Focus 100% on that. Then you do a, a constitution. After that, you go for dexterity for reflex saves or some wisdom for uh, will saves. Uh, strength, I say 10 to 12. And charisma is a dump stat. Let's get to the skills for the wizard. Now, for the skills that wizards have is concentration, really important. Craft alchemy, craft armor, craft weapons. Let's see what else. Spellcraft, extremely important. Lore, it's all right. And if you have any more cross-class skill points, put those into a uh, tumble. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you all advice about feats real quick. Focus on the spellcasting ones. That's really important. Definitely get toughness. You're gonna definitely need that. Now at the beginning, there is a uh, certain uh, feat you could get at level one that uh, instead of your constitution. It goes into your intelligence for uh, more hit points. And if you get any more of those uh, spellcasting uh, feats, you get extra hit points too. Go for that. Yeah, that's right. Definitely go for that. I'm going to go ahead and quickly touch up on the school specialization. That's the only thing for wizards. So here we go. Now, let's go ahead and talk about spell schools. That's right. Wizards get to choose uh, one school or uh, none. So if you want to not handle with the hassle of those... Go ahead and pick the uh, general one so you won't get penalized. You won't get a bonus too. Now, for example, with this school, you get bonuses in casting in uh, that school only. However, you cannot conjure up uh, creatures at all. You're prohibited from it at all uh, times. So definitely uh, be wise on what you want to pick. If you're a rookie, general is the way to go. So let's talk about familiars. Now, quick thing when you start out and level up, when you uh, pick from your spell book, what happens is it's uh, free of charge, so uh, if you can't find that spell or something like that, go for it. As for familiars, pick which one you uh, definitely uh, like. And we're going to go for the combat portion of the video. As for uh, combat, always uh, prepare your uh, spells and then uh, cast your protections first. If you have a tank in your party, make sure you uh, send them in first. So send that fighter in while you uh, cast your uh, spells. Always a good idea to have a pet too. In case you uh, need that extra helping hand. And have those uh, breach spells, dispels too. So this way, if there's any protection on a uh, said uh, lich or wizard, go ahead and remove them too. Wizards are very versatile and powerful. So as soon as I'm done buffing, I'm going to go ahead and get into combat and uh, trash some foes. Let's see which foes we're going to trash for this uh, last part of the video. Lizard folk. Unfortunately, there's no time stop. Sorry about that. Use pause. Very important. So this way you get to uh, cast a few spells ahead of time. And just rip them to shreds. Like this here. So my final advice is. Know what spells you want to cast. In what situation. Send your uh, tank in first. And you uh, go cast away. And I'm going to go ahead and give my final advice. And here we go. Now here's my final advice for this uh, video. Pick which role you want to do. So if you want to cast magic, go for a wizard. If you want to be up front and close with enemies, pick a fighter, for example. Study on what feats you uh, definitely want to get before leveling up. Pick the right skills uh, so this way it will be set up for your character. 
And also uh, compliment the right party members too if you are uh, playing any of the uh, campaigns. In our next Neverwinter Nights 2 classes uh, guide video, we're going to go ahead and do the prestige classes. Well, everyone, this is it for my Neverwinter Nights 2 player based classes uh, guide video. This is Lord Fenton signing off. Have a great day or night. Please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you like what you see, then check out my suggestions on the upper left hand corner or YouTube suggestions of my video on the bottom left hand corner. Have a great day or night and please stay safe. Also, enjoy the view.